this video, I will show you how to add these really cool camera shake effects to your videos so you can kind of transform those, you know, normal freeze frame transitions and give them a little more energy and a little more impact. Now in this video, I'll be, I'll be actually be using four um, separate uh, plugins. Two of them are free. One of them is motion blur plugin and the adjust blur. Don't worry, those plugins are free. And the camera shake preset pack is from Ryan Nagel. I think it only costs like 10 or $15. It's super affordable. And I'm also be using my transform tool to basically have kind of like the way to animate the subject in. Basically, you don't have to ne uh, necessarily use it. All I'm doing is it's taking Apple Motion's parameters and putting them into Final Cut. So there's a couple more things that Apple Motion has that Final Cut doesn't have. So you don't necessarily need that. But those are the four plugins that I'll be using in this video. The links will be down in the description below. So I'll go ahead and just break down just some, a couple simple little tricks. To just add a little more energy and a little more life to your edit. It can be music video, hype video, whatever. These are really cool effects and I will show you how to create that or basically just recreate what you saw in the intro. So as you can see, here is the clip that you saw in the intro. All it is is a simple freeze frame transition, but as the subject is coming in and it's introducing the second clip, you see the whole screen just shakes. So it just gives a lot more impact and a lot more life to the edit. As you can see, again, you know, it's you want to use it for more like faster paced edits, but I just feel it looks so much nicer versus you obviously you'll see it before without the camera shake and trust me, it is a massive uh, difference. So let's go ahead and open up the example. And as you can see, this is what it looks like without the camera shake, without the freeze frame. As you can see, it just looks very boring. Here's a simple cut and I will show you how to make it really advanced. So what you want to do is you have clip one and then clip two. So what you want to do is you want to go to the beginning of clip number two. So make sure the beginning of clip number two, you basically the first frame of clip two and then make sure you're selected on it and then all you want to do is click on option F. All that's going to do is it's going to freeze that first frame of the second clip which is going to be our freeze frame. Now what you want to do is you want to select on the clip itself on the freeze frame click on control D and then we're going to type in 10 which will be like the duration of the freeze frame 10 frames so click in or just type in 10 and all you want to do is click on return and all you did was you set the duration of that freeze frame to 10 frames. So we drag it on top of clip number one we go ahead and just load it up as you can see this is what it looks like you're just playing the clip a freeze frame and then the second clip comes in so it's just very simple but again you I mean you could do that that's a cool transition but let me show you how to make it look even cool there we go so that's basically you know that's simply what it is you're just introducing the first frame of the second clip for 10 frames on top of clip number one just as simple as that now what you want to do is you basically want to cut out the subject so you want to select on the extra freeze from itself head over here to the effects panel go to all and then all you want to do is type in draw mask so the effect is simply called draw mask basically it's just the pen tool it allows you to cut things out so in this case we're already cutting out the subject so let's go ahead and disable the effects panel we're going to go ahead and just disable the these top two panels drag this window down and go over here and let's zoom in to let's say like 600% and then all you want to do is you simply want to just cut around the subject so you can see all I'm doing with my mouse I'm just simply cutting around the subject so you want to just keep doing that and you want to just simply cut around the subject and zoom in as, as you know as close as you want it only goes 600% you can also get over here to the, the, the effects panel and zoom in you know, zoom in the scale and move the position if you want that's just a nice little tip so go ahead and just you know you, all you want to do is you want to just, just keep cutting around the subject I'm gonna go ahead and just speed this process up because you don't want to sit here for 10 minutes and watch me cut the subject but you're basically doing is you're doing do, uh, using the draw mask to cut out the subject now once you get to the edge right here as you can see I'm on the edge all you want to do is zoom out to 50% so just zoom out to 50% so as you can see you can cut along the outside of the subject and then just zoom back in so if you want to know how to cut or like around the edge of the subject just zoom up to 50% you know this, that's just a nice little tip so many times you see that it's cut off and you have to go you know around so you see you, you can't really cut around it just simply like I said like I showed before just zoom up to 50% and then we can just zoom back in to 600% and then continue cutting out the subject now, as you can see I'm just gonna cut the subject and as soon as I get to the end you'll see this circle icon so you can see a little circle icon next to the pen tool all it's gonna do is just simply connect all the dots and there you go just zoom back out and then we can open up these windows just to kind of see the actual mask and there you go the subject is cut now I did not I didn't do like a perfect job because I kind of rushed through a little bit so obviously take your time to really go through and cut out the subject now a couple tips that you can do a couple things I like to do is you could go over here to feather and you could of course feather the subject I don't really mess with it that much at most I would say maybe like negative one is probably you don't want to go too intense with the feather you have, after you have it feathered out what you want to do is and you subject cut out I always like to do this I actually go to shape 
time. You can, of course, enable the mask and, of course, adjust the different points if you want. But honestly, what I just do is I go to shape type and then I turn it to B spline. And all B spline does, it just smooths out all the points. So this obviously requires you to be very, very like specific and very precise when you're cutting out the subject. But I just like doing that because it smooths out all the points and simple as that. And there you go. Those are just a couple of things. I like to do a couple of little tips and simple as that. As you can see, now we can go ahead and just enable the window and then we can drag the timeline back up and then we'll go ahead and play the video and as you can see you just have the subject popping up so you see the subject pops up and there you go goes in the next clip and that's what it should look like and there you go that's basically like the the first step just simply cutting out the freeze frame now what we're going to do is we're going to select on the actual clip itself we we'll head over here to the effects panel and I'm going to go ahead and type in transform. Now this is a plugin for sale on my digital store. Again, like I said before, all it basically does is it takes Apple Motion's parameters and puts them into Final Cut, which again just gives you more options. Now here's what I did. I went to the beginning of the freeze frame, I took the shear and then on the X shear went to 70 degrees, took the scale and then went to zero. I placed a keyframe on scale and then a keyframe on shear. Then I went to the end of the actual freeze frame itself, then I went back to transform, took the scale back up to 100, took the shear to zero, and there you go. All basically do is I just keyframe the shear and the scale, and of course you don't really have the shear in the normal Final Cut parameters, that's why I use the transform tool. And as you can see, see look, the subject just pops in, we'll go ahead and play the video, and this is what it looks like. It's just a really cool animation. But as you can see, that looks fine, but there's no motion blur, there's no camera shake. It just looks like a very simple um, transition, so let me show you how to make it look even more advanced. Now what we're going to do is going to add some really nice camera shakes onto the actual like a freeze frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over here to the text section and we're going to go ahead and just take an adjustment layer and we're just going to place it on top of the clip. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the adjustment layer and we're going to click on control D one two zero and then just click return. So we just set the duration of the adjustment layer to one um, dot you know two zero. Now what you want to do is go to the beginning of the adjustment layer and then just go for two frames. So one two frames place a marker on the adjustment layer and then just place it on top of the freeze frame and on top of you know clip one right there so you just have the first two frames of the adjustment layer on top of the freeze frame layer so if we go ahead and play the video as you can see nothing's really going to happen because we just it's just an adjustment layer so what you want to do is head over here to the effects panel and what you want to do is go over to orange shake and this is from ryan nagel and this will go in your plugins folder and your motions template folder so what we're going to do is going to take the bounce preset and we're just going to simply apply it on top of the adjustment layer now this is how we're going to add our shake effect so if we play the video now let's go over here to the clip or the example now as you can see we added the bounce effect so now the whole screen is going to shake when the freeze frame comes in so we go ahead and play the video as you can see boom the whole as the freeze frame comes in the whole screen just shakes and just it, just it just gives so much energy and so much life to the actual video you also notice the edges are mirrored a little bit so we go and select on the adjustment layer and then go ahead to zoom amount we can just increase the zoom that way it'll hide the mirrored edges of course you if you want to leave it mirrored that's perfectly fine but that is just a nice little tip and as you can see now there's no mirrored edges so we play the video boom here there's just whole screen just shakes this is just a really cool effect and we can also head over here to the adjustment layer and of course adjust the different settings to make it you know more intense or less intense it's completely up to you or you just want it bouncing vertically or horizontally or just want it rotating that's completely up to you you can of course go through and adjust the different settings this is just a really nice um, camera shake preset pack and instead of like applying different presets this is the, 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 there only really is like one bounce animation as you can see there are a whole bunch of other really cool like effects but this is just the only one that I would encourage you to use and then just simply adjust the different settings and as you can see this just looks really Really cool the, the whole the freeze frame comes in and the whole screen just shakes it's just a really cool effect now last thing we're going to do is going to head over here to titles and generators we're going to go over here to motion blur now this is a free plugin also from ryan nagel so what we're going to do is we're going to take moderate motion blur we're going to place it on top of the adjustment layer and you can you can have it like layering the entire adjustment layer if you want but we will go something like this and we're just going to go ahead and trim the motion blur so basically just you know it's completely up to you, but probably you, know, you definitely want the motion blur on top of the freeze frame and then maybe like the first half of the camera shake because it's not the camera shake isn't the complete length of the adjustment layer. It's only the first like maybe 20, 30 frames of the clip it's you know overlaying. You want to make sure the adjustment layer is long. If you have the adjustment layer really short, it might mess up the animation. So if it doesn't look right, I would try to increase the duration of the adjustment layer. And obviously you also want the adjustment layer to be on top of the complete like duration of the clip because you're increasing the scale. So if it's only like the adjustment layer is only here it's going to be scaled and then it'll be you know scale back 
out. So you want to make sure the adjustment is completely overlaying on top of clip number two. So if we go over here, if I go frame by frame, as you can see, there's a little bit of motion blur. So see there's a little bit of motion blur on the subject. If we disable the motion blur, so you see, it just adds a little bit of blur to the extra video, and as you can see right there, it just basically smooths out the animation. Anytime you're doing any kind of animation, any keyframe or anything like that, you want to add motion blur because motion blur is just going to smooth out the animation. Trust me, watch an animation with and without motion blur, and you will notice a massive difference. So as you see, there we go. There is the effect. This really cool freeze from effect where the whole camera shakes. It just gives so much impact and so much life to your video. And you can of course take these concepts, come up with the different ideas. This, these all these ideas also work in different editing programs. But I just want to show you a really simple way to just add more life and more energy to your video. It just looks so much cooler when the subject is like you know coming, you know, scaling up the screen and the whole screen shakes. It just it makes the video feel more alive and just gives the video so much energy. I've probably said energy so many times in this video, but I just want to emphasize it. This effect will give so much energy to your video. Anytime you add any kind of camera shakes to your video, it's just going to make the video feel more alive. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you enjoy these types of videos, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro 10 plugins, presets, and overlays, definitely go ahead and check out my digital store. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.